Greetings friends, this is Reverend Jasper to Mihimbi Sempirirwe. Of course we are now on Family Orta on Right TV. I pray that you join all our platforms so that we continue talking about God is word. Today I want to ask you when things are tough, where do you run to? When things are tough as a family man, as a mother, as a child, where do you run to? Of course many of us run to the family altar and we normally take that for granted, but we thank God for that. When things were tough, Noah indeed ran to God. He got specifications and he and his family were saved. Abraham consulted God when things were tough. Isaac asked God for, you know, Rebecca to produce children when she couldn't produce. When things are tough, where do you run to? Today, it is interesting, many people run to the phone instead of the throne. Others will go in Google instead of going to God. Others will go to the world instead of running to the world. Others will go to fathers and parents instead of going to the Heavenly Father. Others will go to friends instead of going to the friend that sticks closer than a brother. If things are tough, where do you go? I have a man in the Bible. And things were so tough as a head of a nation, as a king, and instead of running to the prophets, instead of running to the priests, he actually ran to a witch doctor. And even today, many people do that. We are going to see that it is only foolishness that can lead you to go to a witch doctor. First Samuel chapter 28, and we shall read verse 16. First Samuel 28, 16, this is now where Philistines have gathered. And Saul, the Bible says, Saul tried to seek God. God was not speaking. Why? Because for 13 years, God had rejected Saul. So he couldn't speak to him, and so he chose to do what many people do today. As the head of a nation, as the head of family, he said, I want to go to a witch doctor. And people told him that there is a witch in a place called Endor, Endor, E-N-D-O-R, that there is a witch. And so, this man goes there and finds the woman. Interestingly, Saul is the one who had said, if they catch any witch, they will kill him. But now he's the one who is now going to the witch. A head of family, a head of a nation is going for witchcraft. Very sad. The head of family, Mukuruweka, Nineka, Isheka, Niwarikuza, Mubafumu, Kuraguza. This man is all the head of a nation, the head of a family, is going to a witch doctor. Manyachiraliza. So kwa hikayo, azirangune nangondetele Samiri. Samiri had died. In verse 16, and I'm not going into the theology of can spirits come or not. No, I'm on when things are tough for your family. Where do you run to? Ebi ntubja soba orazanka he. Verse 16. Samuel said, Why do you consult me now the Lord, that the Lord has turned away from you and become your enemy? A spirit is asking him, Why are you consulting me? I was telling people that if you go to a madman for consultation, it means you are more mad. If you go to a sick person, to ask for medicine, it means that you are more sick. If you go to a person who has many loans to give you a loan, it means that you are more miserable than that person. So now, Saul is being asked, if God has not spoken to you, why are you turning to witchcraft? Verse 17, the Lord has done what he predicted through me, that's Samir, 
the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hands, that's number one, and given it to the one of your neighbors. And that was to David. Because you did not obey the Lord. Many families are in turmoil, are in trouble, because they do not obey the Lord. And then the Lord has done this to you today. That the judgment, that why certain things happen in your family, why certain thicknesses are in your family, it is because the Lord has done it to you because of your disobedience. But then, what does the Lord say in verse 19? The Lord has done this to you today. The Lord will hand over both Israel and you to the Philistines. The Lord will hand over both Israel and you to the Philistines, you as a king. But listen to this. And tomorrow, you and your sons will be with me. In other words, the next day, you and your sons will be dead. The Lord will also hand over the army of Israel to Philistines. Now, this is judgment. This is judgment. He went to a wrong person, yes, but what they are listening from there, what Saul is listening, is that you and your children will die. Of course, he was so sad, he couldn't eat. They even encouraged him to eat. And later, of course, he ate, but he knew he's going to die. When things are tough, where do you run? This man went to a witch doctor, and behold, he's getting death as a result. And I can assure you, many of you who go to consult witches, who go to other gods, who go to other things, I can assure you, the only thing you'll get there is the prophecy that you will die, and die soon. And this is terrible judgment, that he runs to a wrong person, but the wrong person is doing what they normally do, giving through information that is so dangerous, especially to this man, Saul. Listen to this. Saul goes, the next day, what hurts me is that Saul takes all his children to battle. Where do you run to? Instead of going back to God saying, I'm sorry, this man, the next day, goes and takes over. The command takes his children and they begin fighting the Philistines. In chapter 31 of First Samuel, this battle begins. And when it begins, the Philistines had just simply said, look for Saul and kill him. And of course Saul had, had also purposed and that, you know, I will die in battle because I'm a man. But what hurts me, this man forgets that, okay, you can go to die alone, but you are taking the whole family all together. I normally call this sorrow ties, that a mother will manipulate her children and they will be sorrow ties. They will hate those people she hates, they will love those people she loves. That a father will sorrow tie with his son mainly or a daughter, and whatever they do, they will do it together, and whatever the father hates, the son will hate. Wherever the father goes, he goes. Why? Because it is like a soul tie. I saw this in St. Stephen's Chitara, where a young girl had stopped coming to church because they had allegedly abused the mother. So I went to her. I asked, she said, no, 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 they have used my mother, so I cannot attend. I said, you are foolish. Each one of you has their own destinies. If they have used their mother, they never abused you. So stop that foolishness. Go back to church. At least I helped her, and she listened to me. But listen, these children are following daddy to the battleground. Is daddy in the right direction of God? No. And so, if you are a child, listen to me. You will follow your parents as far as they are following God. 
otherwise you and them will perish. Let me repeat. You should follow your parents as far as they are following God and they are in the will of God. But if your father, if your mother are not in the will of God, you honor them as parents, but you don't follow them. Because when you follow their ways, you will die, you will perish with them. And this is what happened to Saul. The choice of what to do in times of trouble is wrong. The message is clear that you are going to die together with your children. And this man now carries all children to the battlefield. And so we are going to see what happens. And again, this is so sad because innocent children die simply because their father was foolish. And so many families in Uganda are dying under the burden of foolish and foolish men and foolish women who have chosen the path of the devil. I mean, I'm not going to mean any word. If you are foolish, you are foolish. The Bible says, how do I become a fool anyway? The Bible says, Proverbs 6, 31 and 32, that if you commit adultery, you are a fool. You lack judgment. You have no sense. And you are destroying yourself. So if you are committing adultery and you are a man, I'm not the one abusing you. I'm simply telling you, God says you are foolish. And instead of pulling your children to go and die with you, leave them. Secondly, if you are given too much alcohol, you are also a fool. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1, that if I'm given too much alcohol, to wine, to entulide, I am a fool. And so I can't give my children entulide, even if it is nice. Then number three, that if you are given to quick anger, easy the anger, you are also a fool. Proverbs 20, verse 3, all of those are there. But if you read also, then chapter 49, Levi and who? Levi and Simeon were angry people. And the cast was their anger. That's what their father said, that he would scatter them in Israel. But that's not what I want us to go to. I want us to know that when you make foolish decisions, please don't allow your family to follow you. At least tell them the truth. And the proper man is the one who repents, rather than saying, hey, follow me, follow me, follow me. Why? Because there will be destruction, not only for you, but for the whole family. First Samuel chapter 38, verse 8, as I end this. Listen to what the Bible says. Verse 8. The next day, when the Philistines came to strip the dead, they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Gilibo. Saul died. His three sons died simply because he dragged them into their wickedness. And one of the sons is called Jonathan, a very nice young man, very good-hearted, a friend of David. But he died because the father pulled him along, sorrow tie. And when you see what, how David mourned them, in the first Samuel chapter, second Samuel chapter 1, he said that in life they were together, they are also together in death. And for me again, if it is a sin by your father, if it is a sin by your mother, please run away. Corner them again. You don't have to abuse them, but I'm telling you, don't follow them. And I have, many, I have told many young men, hey, daddy said, I do this. I have told them, do, do it at your own risk. Especially if you are above majority age, you need to know one thing, that every decision you make is yours. So this man he dies, his three children he die. Where do you go when things are tough? He began wrongly, he ended wrongly. There are so many families, they begin nicely, but they go asunder, especially after a storm. They go to witch doctors, they go to marry other wives. Other women now leave their husbands and go to other, marry other men. And those choices, have eternal 
consequences that the whole family is dragged into hatred, is dragged into witchcraft, and then, in this case, is also dragged into death. I pray today that you repent. I pray today that you will say, I made a wrong choice. May my children make right choices and that you will not drag them. Where do you go when things are tough? I began by saying that many people run to the phone instead of the throne. Please run to the throne of God. Others run to Google instead of to God. I pray today as a head of family, as a woman in the family, as a child, you run to God. Others run to relatives and friends. I pray that you now go to this friend that sticks closer than a brother, that's Jesus Christ. Others will go to their parents, to fathers and mothers, but we have a father who is in heaven. Today is the day when things go wrong. Where do I go? Through repentance, may you go to God. Let us pray. Father, I thank you. Because in times of trouble, you call us to come towards you. I pray this day that whoever has listened to this message, you forgive them of their bad choices. That from today, they will be able to follow you and your son, Jesus Christ, as they receive salvation for themselves and for their families. I thank you, Lord, because you are going to do it. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you as you make right choices now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for tuning Right TV. May God richly bless you. Until next time.